Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about with instruments is this idea of fuzzy regression discontinuity because we can use instrumental variables to actually estimate causal effects um, even if um, the discontinuity is not perfectly sharp, um, which would look something like this. So if we go back to that, that example we did a couple sessions ago and we talked about regression discontinuity, the example was that if you took an exam, an entrance exam, and scored 70 or below, you were automatically assigned to receive a tutor. They would help you and then you could and then we were able to measure the effect of receiving a tutor on final exam scores and so that was the main causal effect we cared about in that session our main focus was on sharp discontinuities where if you scored above 70 you did not get a tutor and if you scored below 70 you did get a tutor and you you did not not get a tutor but often what we have are issues with compliance where um, if you look at this plot here, there are people who scored fairly high that still got a tutor. Um, there's This person here scored like a 90 and they still got a tutor. So they didn't really comply with the program. There are also people down here that scored like a 60 or a 55 who were supposed to get a tutor, but they did not. Um, either because they fell through bureaucratic cracks or because they're a never taker. And even though they were assigned to, to do it, they're not going to do it, or maybe they're a defier, um, even though we pretend they don't exist. Um, and so these people here are kind of messing up whatever jump we have at the discontinuity um, because there's non compliance. So fuzzy discontinuities imply non compliance. Um, so, how do we deal with compliance issues? As we talked about in the last two sections here, you deal with compliance using instrumental variables because instrumental variables give you the complier average causal effect. So what we can do is use an instrument with our regression discontinuity to limit the causal effect at that jump at the cutoff to just compliers. And so we ignore the always takers and the never takers and only look at the compliers. So to do this, we need to throw an instrument into the model. And what do we use? It's not a weird instrument again. This is The instrument here is just an indicator variable that shows what they were supposed to do. Um, so it's true if they're above the cutoff, it's false if they're below the cutoff. Um, so if they were above the cutoff and they did the program, um, or they weren't supposed to do it and they did, um, this won't show that. This will just show what they should have done. So you basically make a column that, that measures what they were supposed to do, and then you use that as the instrument. And this is just like the, the complier average causal effect that we did in the previous section. Um, it's the same principle. We're finding the effect of compliance or the effect of the program for just compliers. And again, this is not a weird instrument. It's not rainfall. It's not Scrabble scores. It's not anything like that. It's just an indicator that says you were above or below the score, um, the, the threshold. But it still works as an instrument. So it is relevant. Um, being above or below the cutoff causes you to access the program. That is relevant. So here's our instrument, Z, that's above or below the cutoff. It causes program use. There's definitely an arrow in that DAG, and it's not. A, it needs to be a non-zero correlation. Um, if you're above the cutoff, you're going to, or below the cutoff in this case, you're going to use the program. So if there's a relationship there, it is relevant. The excludability principle or exclusion principle here. The cutoff causes the program or causes the outcome only through the program. Um, and that is true. So being above the cutoff or below the cutoff causes whatever outcome you have, but it's only because you get access to the program or you don't get access to the program. Um, and it works as an instrument. If you can think of other stories that the act of being above or below a cutoff, not like your ability to score well on the test, just like the cutoff exists, that's just kind of its own thing. Um, that's not like there's no other pathway between the cutoff itself and the outcome other than gaining access to the program. So it works as an instrument with exclusion. Finally, we have exogeneity. This is the idea that um, nothing else should influence that um, cutoff node, which again, it still works here. Are there unobserved things that influence the outcome that also don't influence the cutoff? Yeah, this was an arbitrary cutoff that was established by some bureaucrat somewhere that said that this is the score that you have to get. That is an arbitrary exogenous cutoff. 
which means it works as an instrument. Um, so it meets all three of these characteristics, even though it's not kind of rainfall or Scrabble score or kind of a weird, one of the more classical weird instruments. Um, so it works. Um, one caveat to all of this is the effect that you find when you use fuzzy regression discontinuity is actually doubly local, which means you have to add even more caveats when you're describing it. So regression discontinuity is already local because you're describing the causal effect for people just in the bandwidth. So now what you're doing is you're talking about the effect for people in the bandwidth who are also compliers. So it's like local inside local. So um, just when you're talking about any fuzzy regression discontinuity results, just be specific about the effects that is for compliers in the bandwidth. Don't try to make population level claims with this at all because you're two steps away from the population at this point. Um, so how do you do fuzzy regression discontinuity with R? Um, it's basically the same process that we did before. Um, you can either do it parametrically or non-parametrically. So parametrically means you have a regression equation, just like a regular linear regression. You stick a whole bunch of terms in it, um, and it gives you the causal effect. Um, the only difference is instead of using LM for a linear model, you use IV robust for an instrumental variables model. Um, and you just have to generate your instrument. So in this case, we're still going to center the entrance exam so that we can see um, basically what happens at the jump, at the, at the actual cutoff at 70. Um, but then we're going to make a new variable here called below cutoff. And so if this person scores below 70 or 70 or below, then that is the instrument. They were below the cutoff. Um, if we look at the first few rows of our data set here, um, this person was below, that was below, that was above, below, above, above. Um, actually, these first six rows, none of these people kind of didn't follow along um, because this person was not supposed to use the tutoring, not supposed to, and they didn't, and they were below. So all of these match. But eventually you'll find somebody who used tutoring who was above the cutoff. Um, so that's where the, the non-compliance comes. First six rows don't show that, but there are there is non-compliance here. So after you center the running variable, just like you do with normal regression discontinuity, um, and you have your instrument, which is being below or above the cutoff, you use that in a two-stage least squares model. And so here we're looking at a bandwidth of plus or minus 10. So we use IV robust instead of um, LM. And so the, the second stage here is our exit exam. That's our main outcome, is explained by entrance, centered, and tutoring. This is identical to what we did before with regular sharp regression discontinuity. Um, because that will show us the effect of, of basically when you're right at the cutoff, the jump that happens because of tutoring. Um, that's this tutoring column here. The thing we add is the instrument, which comes after this pipe sign here. And we want the below cutoff. Um, and that is our instrument. We also have to add entrance centered because control variables have to be in both sides. And so we have entrance centered plus below cutoff. This data argument is just how we limit the bandwidth to plus or minus 10 around the entrance exam. Um, and that's all we do. So this is the regular um, syntax that we had for sharp discontinuity. The only new thing is we've added the instrument for below cutoff. And if we look at the results, the causal effect of tutoring for compliers in the, 10, in the plus or minus 10 bandwidth area is 9.74 points on the final exam. And that is your causal effect. It would be different if we treated this as sharp. Um, the effect would be wrong. This is more accurate because we used the instrument for below cutoff, and it worked. You can also do this with, um, I've, with RD robust for non-parametric fuzzy regression discontinuity. Um, to do that, you use an argument called fuzzy. Um, the tricky part here, and this took me a while to figure out, took hours of like fighting with this thing because I wasn't finding the, the results it was supposed to be. Um, when you say fuzzy equals whatever, you do not use the ver or the instrument here. Even though technically you're, you're using an instrumental variable like we did here below cutoff, you don't actually put that in RD robust. It figures it out for you behind the scenes. So in fuzzy, what you actually feed it is treatment status, not um, the instrumental variable that you make. 
it's just a weird quirk of RG Robust. It it figures out the instrument for you. You just don't see that happen. Um, so what we're saying here is our outcome is the exit exam. Our running variable is the entrance exam. Our cutoff is 70. And fuzzy, we're going to use whether or not they used the tutoring. And then behind the scenes, it'll make the instrument for you and do it. Um, and so using this non-parametric fuzzy regression discontinuity, here is our causal effect for compliers in the bandwidth, which is 9.68 points. Um, before it was 9.74 if we did just parametric fuzzy regression discontinuity. This is a little bit different, but still within the same range. Um, if we didn't include fuzzy, it would probably be like 10 or 11 or something wrong. Um, but this is right because we're using an instrument to account for compliers. And so we're only looking at the compliers in the bandwidth and it works because of instruments.